I can, I can tell you about Richard, uh, who's coming on next. Richard Tyro Jones, a poet so good he's uh, got three names. And um, he runs a, a, a regular spoken word night called Utter. Or rather, it's irregular because uh, it's not always at the same venue or the same place. Um, but that's been going for nearly 10 years. Uh, do come in. Hi. <laughs> Um, and Richard has been uh, Richard has been um, in Edinburgh this year. He did a three-week show in Edinburgh, and he's also uh, touring that show. So if you happen to be in Oxford tomorrow night and you don't see enough of him tonight, you'll be able to see him then. It goes on to uh, uh, Canterbury, Plymouth, Manchester, Cambridge, Wolverhampton, Leicester, and Bradford. So I think um, it's probably I've probably said enough about Richard now. He can probably speak for himself. So please welcome Richard Tyrone Jones. Here he is. I can speak for myself, but only because I've just had a really long, good cough. <laughs> there, so thank you for covering uh, while I did that. Yes, um, you my all your poems out in the meantime. So. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. My, so my first um, debut solo show, Richard Tyrone Jones's Big Heart, is my second book. So a bit of that in a while. But um, I think I. Um, having almost died, you then kind of go through all your material, and a couple, well, a couple of friends said, I was rereading your book, and um, it's amazing how um, morbid it is, and it seems to foreshadow <laughs> the fact that you were going to die. Obviously, everybody dies, and everything that they write after they wrote during their life then seems morbid, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this really is morbid. It's just death, 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 death. Um, so I'll give you a bit of the, uh, the first... Uh, sh uh, first book first. Okay, um, this one uh, is a fictional happening um, called Pile Up. The accident black spot ate teenagers and excreted urban myths. You'll have heard the one about the kids who drunk, skidded into it, leapt through the windscreen more grudgingly graceful than showroom dummies, died and gave birth to a bed of flowers. One week later, two more kids of the same age took the same corner at the same speed, just as drunk, hit it at the same angle, same make of car, but survived due to the impact being cushioned by the snowdrift of flowers, cards and stuffed toys piled high. Another week later, once the news had done its rounds, a crazy man from Aberdeen drove full pelt into it. Bollards breaking neck as the molar does the twiglets, wearing no seatbelt, no airbag, nothing but a full-size, top-to-toe teddy bear suit. <laughs> I think that's what they call black humour, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, um, while, while I was in the hospital, um, when they finally kind of figured out what was wrong with me, all the doctors kept asking me in interminable um, interrogations, and it was asked, well, is, is that, ensure there's, you're sure you're not an alcoholic? And I was like, well, well you know, I, I, I do like a pint, but I don't drink that much. And, you know, do you party very hard? It's like, I don't, I've tried a pinch of methadrone, but only enough to annoy the Daily Mail. And, um, and it was like, is there any history of um, heart uh, failure or heart disease uh, in your family? And I said, um, no, because, uh, well, my, my granddad has um, a pacemaker, but he's like in his 80s. So I said, we much prefer to go slowly mental instead. Um, and uh, sorry, I, th I heard you um, talking about um, early onset Alzheimer's, and um, I didn't, didn't join it, but, but I'm joining in now with a poem. <laughs> Um, this is about my, my gran, who's, um, you know, uh, who had, well, not really early on to Alzheimer's, but my, um, my nan uh, uh, seems to have passed it down to my mum. So it's kind of like I wrote this poem for my gran. But basically, I didn't think that I would um, die of heart failure. Um, I thought that I would um, die of seeing our dementia instead. So I wasn't really expecting the heart failure. Um, visiting time. This skeletal... Michael Finnegan in a gown is all time's winds have left of old gran. Sharon Stone nappy flash. Water retention has inverted her legs. Thigh-like calves 
veal calf thighs. It's like that film, Memento, you remember, but with just the one death. Her memory's camera zooms towards her birth, at the film's end. Every five minutes, a new time traveller teleports into her body, the pod from 68, 67, 65, and we explain it all again. What year is this? Role playing. I'm her nephew, son-in-law, sisters and daughters. She's got to see her dad. Playing happy families, the old maid shuffles the pack. And the songs she sings are from the war. Her vision's gone. We can't see past 1944. Can't even watch TV. Even if she could, at three pounds per day, they're all turned off and to the wall. Neglected patients. These screens fade to white dots, leaving only an after image pressed on the retina. A song stuck in the memory of those about to leave. Repeats. All just repeats. Visiting time is over. And yet, yeah, I did have um, a kind of an idea about what I wanted to happen um, after I died. Um, would you like to know what my will was um, in this book, or would you like to know what was going to be written on my bench? Will? Will. Or bench? Bench. Bench. I think more people on the bench. Okay. My bench. <laughs> Richard Tyrone Jones, 1980 to 2038. He was a shit. Tramps get priority. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do um, a few more from the book in the second half, and um, like uh, uh, one from the show. But um, uh, it, it, it's about heart failure, but it is actually the whole show is just about. Just, just heart failure. There's no metaphor in it for romance or anything, except in this poem, which is um, about um, how I kind of, you know, broke my heart a little bit because, um, um, you know, I was feeling tired and knackered, and I thought I was just a bit depressed, and so I thought, I know, I'll book myself um, a holiday to Rome uh, in December and go and visit Keats's grave. That will cheer me up. <laughs> and um, instead, I ended up having a bit of a kind of schoolboy crush on this uh, young lady um, from uh, my old university. So, um, this one is called I Heart Roma. How can a nation so cynical be so romantic with it? It's Euros mint Venus on the verso Berlusconi. Perhaps surfeit of love, frustrated, flips into cynicism. I fall into step with two teenagers, girl guiding boy, scarf blindfolded through casual protests and orangery to the Aventine viewpoint. He feigns awe. The sun, coin in a fountain, sinks beneath other lovers, a German photographer and someone pushing an invalid, which somehow makes me feel less alone. Atop the Spanish steps, near where Keats died, you see for miles. A ghost skein of starlings twists across the sky, transforming, dancing a discarded veil, skull, jellyfish, mushroom, briefly a heart. Bangladeshi's prowl, holding one euro roses and fixed smiles. They cake whole districts in white shit, apparently, and the rich hire special squads, to scare them off with loud noises and guns. The starlings, I mean, not the Bangladeshis. <laughs> One of whom finally sells three to a bloke whose wife must fish for cash in her purse. I held court in the hostel dining room, dispensing shots like honours. A girl slunk in behind dark curls and Il Figaro. I thought, hello. <laughs> Waited an interval. She was Erasmus. I guessed Oxford, or Cambridge. Not mine, but not one of the arsehole colleges either. As for school, I joked, Cheltenham Ladies College? She was gobsmacked. So I was psychic. Her third year languages. We talked of Comora. 
She translated stuff. I explained some emperors. One of those instant friendships forged only in squats, sinking ships and ostellos. <laughs> Next day, we hit the Vatican. She'd a fancy to take communion. We raced under Starling bombers on shite-iced Via di Panico. While I was scared that, in my body, an atheist Anglican, the Eucharist would turn to poison, she happily dozed, dividing my attention between Bernini's altar, her rosy cheekbones, and the echoing Latin drone. I almost forgot to swallow, joked, we're turning into Catholics now. We talked pomp, joked, her dad had been governor of Barbados. Sword, waiter's hat, feathered suit, sorry, sword, waiter's suit, feathered hat. Her artist mum once worked for aid for Afghanistan. Had to say it, I bet she met Bin Laden when he was a good guy. <laughs> Guest intelligence. We hiked up to the Vatican cupola, covered in strange mosaics. She said she'd like her bathroom like this. I sense talking interior design already. Could be wife material. <laughs> Leaning cramped up the dome, concerned how hard my heart thumped. I can't feel this much already. I must just be claustrophobic. To free my mind from those clagged tunnels, I dusted off a character who'd last done service in Venice. Another girl, another life. Fastidious and boring. He sold those plastic treads that uh, keep your grip. Did you know? There's over two kilometres of step treads, TM, in St. Peter's, over 351 steps. High quality polyethylene blend. His name came from a warning sign. Bez, Bez Windy, Step Treads TM Incorporated. Their corporate rivals, Tread Steps, made exactly the same thing. I have the contracts for all of the Vatican. Tread Steps have all Jerusalem, but I will take it from them. She was cracking up. I was in luck. Her ex had also been a comedian. The summit crushed us, like angels slowly revolving on a pinhead. She held my hand. I let myself imagine us as a retired couple. On the roof below, we chatted like old friends, watched the sunsets. It could have been, were it not for the ten years that separated us. Ten years and the class system older than the edifice we'd just scaled. We ate Zabaglioni. I showed her your favourite turtle trapeze fountain. She skipped, girl-like, singing La Donna Mobile near the Pantheon. Perhaps she just missed being near an older man. Still, we held hands. Next night, the markets. She haggled for earrings. We ate gelati, laughed at a vast polony. The Kiwi girl went back early, tired, or she didn't like gooseberry flavour. We drank red on a statue because she claimed she was skint. Then she pointed out a window in an embassy palazzo where her dad had once taken her and her sister to a reception. I remember now. They had dancing, grand formal gardens, Roman ruins in the basement. She let me into that magical childhood before she lost him. I made some crack about Frero Rocher and dragged her to the arse end of a poetry evening. <laughs> Never mind slam. All Italian speech is performance, sound and dance. They always translate for the deaf with their hands. I explained my theory of pan-bisexuality over chocolate and amaretto. We found bad poetry in the night around Isola Taverina, scoffed at the pipistral colonies of teens initialed arrow-hearted locks. Meant to last forever, just pray for bolt cutters. She grimaced for a photo. Crawling down, to the Ponte's pillars and raging sluices. I knew my heart beat too fast in relation to the danger. You can't die in the Tiber, I joked nervously, unless you're a traitor. Crawling behind a pillar, for long seconds, she was with Schrodinger, emerged. I breathed. She translated plaques, we mutually rubbed backs, then both got caught short in the ghetto and nipped down alleyways for a slash. The Bangladeshis tried to sell us a rose. She refused it. But when I hugged a good night, it was a small, still, only slightly awkward moment. I inevitably messed it all up by trying to kiss her in the lift. In the morning, she had to shop for a dictionary, fly home. The rest's 
postscript, me trudging adrift through the labyrinth of the Vatican museums. In the Sistine, she texted, insisting she wished she could explore it with me. Guards hissed, shh, no photo, but I've got a photographic memory, protested Bez Windy, wittily. But... <laughs> but with no one there to hear him. On the Spanish steps, alone, no Bangladeshis drew near him. So when Bez and I returned home, and she failed to return our email, I sighed, unsurprised. But then, it wasn't just her hand I'd been holding. It was that other girl's, ten years ago, different time, chita, college, but me the same lewd old arsehole. Look, if I count the ways my muses are or aren't one, I'll get in trouble. It's as complicated and long-winded as one of my old essays. Let's just say my love's as layered as Rome's living rubble. It wasn't her broke my heart, but all of my histories. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, Richard Tyrone Jones, and uh, more applause, please, for Richard. <laughs> he too will be uh, back in the second half. And um, <clears throat> our next performer, um, I've only met.